Here we go. Hello, everyone. I'm so freaking excited for tonight's Zoom and for Lachelle to speak to us because I've been watching Lachelle for longer than I want to admit. I remember when I first started, I was like, look, who is this girl? Because I, I don't know. I've just always watched her. But I am just so excited for 2021 already. Put a two in the chat if this year is already blowing you away. Like you're like, where are these enrollments coming from? Where are these potentials coming from? Where is this excitement? 2021 is blowing things out of the water already. So, um, Lachelle, I'm going to go ahead and unmute. If you want to just share a little bit about your story, like before it works, kind of how your journey has been and anything that you want to share. Yeah. Hi guys. So I love cameras on because I always stay on Valerie view. Cause I like to just see everybody. And I'm just seeing a couple people that I recognize Haley white, Vanessa can't say your last name. Of course not. Ashley, I can't say your new last name either. <laughs> I was just seeing if I recognized anyone on here. So I'm super honored to be here. It's always honorable to be asked to speak on another team zoom. It's just, you know, it's, it has a lot to do with trust and I'm just very honored that you asked me. Um, and so just a little about me, if you're not familiar with my story, um, I've been involved with the works now for five years. I joined in July of 2015. I was the typical hater. Okay. So like even the haters keep them close because they might turn into a master and iron. Um, I was like a total hater. I thought the Mary Kay Cadillacs were sneh, or what Lexus, whatever. Like I went to the parties. I tried on the purses, smelled the candles, whatever. Like I did all those things and I just thought network marketing was a joke. I was very much like get a real job kind of mentality. And I was just because I was really naive and, um, my best friend actually joined and like, this was back 2015 where like social media was just social media and nothing more. <laughs> and she was posting belly pictures and she was trying to sell something and, and me just always wanting to protect her. <laughs> That's how I feel like I'm still her bodyguard. I was like, are you trying to sell something? I'm like, you're in one of those pyramid scheme things. Like you need to get out. But I'm also super green. So I went and found out all, all this like information about the company. Um, and I found only good. Like I couldn't find anything bad. And then I decided to join. She didn't even realize when I joined a distributor, she thought I did it on accident. And she thought I tried to order. Long story short in that, you know, the reason why I coming from, and I just love to tell this part of my story, just because I was such a hater was that, you know, at that part of my life, I was just like miserable. I was in the art, the industry for a very long time. I was a flair bartender, bartender for seven years. I made a lot of money. You know, I would close out nights at a thousand dollars in tips. And, um, but I was just naive to anything different. I did go to school. I got a bachelor's degree very quickly. I went into interior design and architectural engineering. And it was just like, a salary of $30,000 a year, I went back to bartending. And so it was a point in my life where I was struggling because I was trying to be an adult. I thought I had to, done everything right, um, but I wasn't going to make it in the career world. Like, I don't think I'm actually, I'm not, I can't be employable. Like if I ever do architecture or anything like that, I'll have to be my own boss. And I needed something. And so me trying to get, like figure out my best friend joined and try to get her out of it. I actually joined because the knowledge that I obtained while trying to find reasons to get her out were all the reasons that I needed this. And so I really truly believe that God led my best friend <laughs> to this business to lead me to also join. Um, and I was just drowning in debt. You know, I was a typical college graduate since I had done college and I went to an institute. I went all year long. I got my bachelor's in 27 months. And um, I had, it was a very expensive piece of paper that I promised my dad I would get. So it's totally worth it still, but it was $100,000. And so I had $100,000 in just student loans. And I was also, you know, really trying to stay out of the industry because I had just recently moved to Vegas and I didn't want to get into the bartending industry because I knew if I got in, they'd want me and I want to be able to get out. <laughs> and so I was just, I applied a job. So I was an executive assistant to a CEO of a um, marketing firm in Vegas. And I, had no life. I could like barely be on my phone, whatever, but I found out a way to make it work. And I'm telling you right now that five years later, you know, it's been a ride and there's so many different parts of my story that I don't even know what the questions are going to be asked, but if anything, if I can leave on a note at the end, I'll tell you kind of some of the things that I've gone through to get to here today. But after five years, I was able to promote through all of the ranks. And I always told myself, you know, after I really found self-development and after I found the power of manifesting, I always told myself that at least one rank a year and then I can complain because I wasn't going anywhere in the bartending industry 
that would change my life in eight years. And I was going, I mean, it would take more than eight years in the architect architectural or interior design industry to making, you know, six figures. It just, it's just insane, okay? That I promised myself to just decide on it and work with no end in mind. And so five years later, I'm Ambassador Diamond. I've made a million dollars. I was just recently inducted into the Millionaires Club. Um, alone, just on my own account, on my 1.0 account, I've been able to earn $220,000 in bonuses. I've also had two spouses in this little adventure. And through both spouse accounts combined, I've earned 230,000. So I do like to say that I've made 450,000 even though we just had really two privileged men in my life. So anyways, that's a little bit about my story. Oh my gosh. I am dying, dying. Okay. So <laughs> I was, I always say to my husband, I'm like, I earned more bonuses on your account than mine. So I'm just going to claim all of them. Cause that's not fair. Um, it's obnoxious. I'm like, that's not, you like tripled my bonuses. I'm not okay with it. Um, but I love that you said it because so you said, as long as I could promote once a year, in eight years, you'd be ambassador. And I love that you said that because so many times people start and they're like, oh. I, I also said that I could start complaining, okay? Because <laughs> just, I wanted to start complaining, but keep going, sorry. No, you're good because so many people like, they're like, oh, I didn't hit diamond in 30 days, which means I'm bound to fail. And I just like want you guys to wrap your head around that. Even if you only promoted once a year, which realistically we can all promote more than once every single year. In eight years, you'd be making $30,000 a month insert income disclosure here there's no other job that you can do that especially with the freedom that we have like insane okay so you promoted super quick when you started so i'm going to read these because people need to know so you joined july 17th but didn't really start till august went ruby in september diamond november double that next february triple in march that's a lot of promoting in like a matter of six or seven months so Obviously, social media is way different now than it was in 2015, but if there's someone who's brand new or maybe they've been in for a little bit, what tips would you have um, for them about promoting quickly? Yes. So let me just see if I can find this one. Thanks. So guys, so I came in complete ignorance on fire. I will be the first one to tell anybody that I am so not perfect. Like, listen, I went to art school so I can really paint my face on. All right. I was also exposed to graphic designers. So like I can make some graphics and stuff like that, but like really behind closed doors, like I am just a total mess all the time. Like it never ends. Like it's just a full on mess. Okay. So I'm not perfect. And so I had no intention. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no intention of trying to be perfect when I joined this business, because I didn't even know what perfect in this business looked like. You know, I joined from a best friend that had no idea what she was doing. And um, so I didn't have any direction. So I didn't have an upline. Like I didn't, Rachel Jones is actually a part of my upline and I didn't meet her until the month I was going diamond. That was two months later, you know? So I was complete ignorance on fire. And I know that you hear a lot of leaders say this, but like, I just want to explain to you like how ignorant I was. Like I knew I can go to my best friend because I just still my best friend to this day, but I still can't go to work help kind of thing like I had to find resources in order to be successful like I did my own due diligence with learning about the company so I did the the um it works training in e-suite multiple times and I went to YouTube and I would search the word it works and I would I read almost every blog or anything that had to do with it works like I just went in and found all of the information for myself when I think about how I did it so quickly I honestly will tell you I had no idea that we, anything else was involved. I didn't understand what leadership was. I didn't understand anything besides the steps to success. Just enroll three distributors a month and four customers or more. And then everybody that you enroll, teach them to do the same. Because my first action is enrolling three distributors and four loyal customers. So I am just researching on how to attract distributors, how to talk to them, like watching every single YouTube video, watching, looking in the document library, what, I mean, I remember trying to explain the loyal customer program to like the first couple of people that I was talking to about products and like, they would ask me things and I'd be like, I don't know, hold on. <laughs> like, I was just, I didn't know that making people wait in sales was not, 
ideal. Like I didn't know anything. I was just going. All I knew was that you can make a lot of money with this company and go sign distributors, go sign for loyal customers, teach them to do the exact same thing. And the compound effect happened. I get going all the way, like host to post is only been around for two years. Okay. So I'm on presidential diamond on the old charts. That's what I was trying to find. I, I still have them. I just don't know where they're at. I have my actual charts that took me that month. They're disgusting. I laminated them, but I keep them as like little trophies for me because I literally, when you were asking about this, that's all I was thinking about. Like, wow. When you said like, how did you do it so quickly? I just knew I had to take the people that I needed to promote and teach them to enroll three distributors and four customers. And then we'll teach those three distributors to do the same exact thing. Like we stayed on steps to success and that was it. Like that's all we did. All right. Nowadays, it's like, I almost still just truly believe in the compound effect. Like I have had months where I've mass enrolled. Um, my mass enrollments are like my highest for distributors is 38. My highest for low customers is like 80 something. Okay. But like that to me still is something that like, I love that I've done that. I still have numbers I want to hit that are higher than that. I'm going to do it like, but my dreams are like, I'm going to do that one time this year <laughs> because I would rather be 30 customers a month and six distributors every single month. And then being able to teach other people just from like easy ways, like host posts or, or I mean, there's so many different formats, but just really easy systems where like they can too do that. Um, and the compound effect, I just think is still so important. And like, you don't have to be a mass enroller. You don't. You don't like you just if you just make sure that everybody is matching a baseline, then you will watch this like amazing compound happen. And that's what took me what that I've promoted to triple in seven months. And I truly just thought that you're just supposed to teach everybody what exactly what you were doing. I didn't overcomplicate it at all. And then when I got more exposure to leadership, that's where I started overcomplicating everything. But we have just we we really like the last probably a year and a half really simplified everything. And we've seen a major compound effect. And that's how I was able to go ambassador was the compound effect. Yeah. I think so many times we get so like in our heads about trying to promote super fast and be like, okay, I have to build this whole chart, whole chart myself. And I have to get all the customers and all the things when really, if we can teach three people to get three people and teach them to get three people, you've just charted for diamond. Mm -hmm. And so many times we get so stressed about, oh my God, I have to find 15 people. Well, no, really you have to find three. And then help mm -hmm. them find three. Like we all know three people that can make money, right? So I think simplifying that and just remembering it's not all on you. And your job is to help other people do it too. And not you do the whole thing yourself. So do you have any tips for really teaching that duplication quickly to help new distributors sign customers and sign distributors right away? Or are you just doing like, do host a post, ask people, or do you feel like there's any specific thing that's working really well? So I actually just got off of FaceTime with an, one of my, my newest distributor, um, like, I don't know, five minutes before I got on here and then my child saw me go to the bathroom and screamed for me and then I had to help him and then like down here late. But so I was on the phone with her and, you know, like, I think the first thing when, when anybody enters, we're all excited, right? Like we all remember our first day, like, or just our first dreams like our daydreams right where it's like euphoric like we're really thinking about like what this is going to do to our life and I tr I think that like the first thing I work on like the first like when I say this and I just I think it's so important and I know I might sound crazy but just like that's what I mean I have to have one-on-ones with my new distributors within the first 72 hours it has been a rule with me for since I had an iPhone so that was like four years ago they have to see me and I'm crazy like I have to get them in front of me because I need them to trust me all right. Because I think about this. All right. Compound effect works when they do it. All right. They got to like you relaying to them trust and like you're taking your time and giving it to them. Um, they listen. All right. So as soon as I was off the phone with her and sh I told her that we're just going to go into host post, we always go into host post. That's where I have found compound now. It's always host post because host to post is enough exposure to productivity enrollments, exposure, growing your Facebook network, you can get loyal customers and you can sign distributors. Like it's truly one of those 
things that if you get everybody excited about doing it, that you get everything from it. Like you can truly get everything that you need in network marketing and in this company, in this business, like everything from host to post. If you work it all around. And I really want to explain that to them. And I, do I sound excited? Like, I don't know if I, how excited I sound right now, <laughs> but I'm excited about host post still. And I've been doing it every day for two years. It still makes me happy through even some dark days recently. What do I do? Go host post. Why? Because it gets my ambition going. It gets my fire going. It gets my like, vibe going it's like you know when you break the seal with one loyal customer you're like I'm another one like kind of thing like and I want to expose people to the joy of the process of working this business because it brings me joy like I have fun with it I have fun with it like I high five my boyfriend or I'm um, my fiance or I love my child more when I sign a customer like it's just like kind of becoming a part of me and I want new distributors to see that it excites me and then I teach them how to host a post because I want them to know why I want them to learn how to host a post. And I feel this way still every time. Like it's so easy for me to talk about it because I've done it. And I'm telling you, if you have not committed to the cycle of host a post, which is a whole, I feel like it's like a we are the world cycle. It's like you can get all of it from host to post. You add people, you expand your network, you're talking about the products, you're finding potential customers and distributors, you're signing oils and you're signing distributors. Like it's so many different ways. And then I just start them on that process. I have like a one through 10 process of explaining host to post. Um, I have like a video that I tag them in and stuff like that, but then I really just do walk them through the entire, their first 10 host posts. I just feel like I'm at their complete service. And then I challenge them to do 50 and um, 50 is where they find the compound. Like 50 is where they get their six enrollments, where I tell them to like, make sure they're writing down names of anybody that gets more than six comments. Six is my rule. And um, then we're going to offer the opportunity to them and I'm having them add people that they feel comfortable with adding from the comments. And so they're expanding their network. And then I simply, as, as soon as they get their first six customers from host to post, then I just have another conversation with them where I just say, I'm like, okay, how easy was that? Was that fun? We're going to find distributors that you can teach them how to do exactly that. And it's just like the compound effect again, of like, we're just, I don't know, we're having fun with it. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love that you told them to get 50 because I think a lot of times with new distributors, I'm like, okay, let's just get like two or three. Like, let's just try to get dip your feet in the water. And then they get like no comments and they're like, well, that didn't work. That was stupid. And then they get mad. And it's like, we all know as distributors who do host posts consistently, we can get 10 that have zero comments and the next one gets like 75. And you're like, what just happened? So I love that you them a big number. Yeah. Let me add something in to you guys. And so I don't know how many people are diamond and above or emerald and above on here. Can you give me a one? And yeah. Or how many of you have maybe been boxed or something you've never hit? Add in a one, two. Okay. Um, you know, like something that's so great about this business is that there's like developing trends or different leaders will give you different advice on what's working for them. And I really, I always call it the success stew. My team knows this. Okay. We're just, we're adding ingredients to our success stew all the time. Um, but if this is something that you feel would work for you, just being a leader that has failed multiple times at things and had to re-enter, I'm always going back to ask people if I can re-enroll as their upline, which means basically, can I try again with them? Because I might have a better sister for, system for them. And I just want to tell all this story really quick and I'll make it really short because if, if you ever feel as if you want to try again with somebody that you've enrolled, um, especially if like a system is, you know, I don't know, exposed to you that you think will work, try like you're not giving up on them by trying, okay? I have a girl, her name is Carrie Creasy. She's a double diamond on my team that was not commission qualified all of last year, only signed one customer last year. And this year I called her January when I created a new system for our teams and I FaceTimed her and she answered on accident. <laughs> and I was just like, I gave her the whole thing. I'm like, listen, I have a new system. And I think that you're going to really love it. Like I, I see that you haven't canceled and that's for a reason. Like it's me. We've already talked, you know, that my heart is good. Like, can I try to teach you this? Because I think that this you will get, and I think that you'll lead a team with this. Like, I just think that this is your system. And she went double diamond in four months. And now she's literally just charted for triple and she's going presidential. So it's again, too, guys, like, just don't be afraid that like the compound effect doesn't mean you have to go get new people to compound with, like go to the people that are already on your team and compound with them. I love that.
Okay. I love that so much. And your rule of six of like asking those people, because I, I ask everyone because if you would have had me host a post, you would have gotten all of zero customers and all of zero comments. Cause that's just what my network was. So I don't count anyone out, but I love that for some new distributors, they don't want to ask everyone. So saying, Hey, like they legit have a network and they might feel more comfortable asking that way. So, okay. So I know from press to ambassador, you were kind of sitting there for a while and I know I want whoever's on put a two in the chat. If you felt stuck at a rank or stuck at a specific spot in your business that you just feel like you cannot get through it. So what are your tips for like pushing through that barrier of like, why the heck am I still at this rank or why am I still at this volume or this paycheck or whatever? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I have truly felt, you know, from press to and back, I felt as if, okay, not a lot of life happened to me prior to joining this business. Like, I guess, a lot, okay, a lot of life happened to me, but I almost felt like as if when I joined this business, I was doing everything right, all right, but I wasn't doing enough for the person that God was leading me to be. And um, from Prez to Ambassador, you know, it took three years. I went Prez in 2017, and I went Ambassador last year. So it took three years, but I am so grateful for those three years. Like, I am so grateful for those three years. Um, and I almost feel sometimes as that if, like, I don't know. I got a little lucky with like the leaders that are like even still with me. Like I have only lost four personal diamonds ever. And like the ones that have just stuck with me and like, we've really done this. All right. Um, you know, if you get stuck in this business, this business is not your foundation. So there's something that's happening within your life that is making you stuck. And like, I'm not here. To, I mean, I can't blame the business for anything ever because like we're lying to ourselves when we do that. We are, we just are. And it's okay to be in a part of your life that you need to work on before you can, you know, go forward in your business. Like it is okay. The more, the longer that you're in denial of it, the longer it takes to re-promote. You know, when I say re-promote, I mean it. Like I have lost rank and had to, I re-promote. I look at it as re-promoting. <laughs> I do. And because I, there's work to be put in, in order to get it back. And I am grateful for how long it took me to go ambassador because it was one of those, you know, a lot of life happened. You know, my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer. We've been on this incredible journey of over a year, thanks to this business, like truly, um, where she has, she beat it barely. She's now in, in remission for three and a half years. And just like, and I, I mean, I don't, I, it's almost like, I feel like I've out, talked about it so much, but it's truly one of those things where like would not have happened if it wasn't for it works. Like I went through a very, um, something I hid, you know, we hide things from social media, but like a really hard, hard breakup that like really put my mental health at a very, um, uncomfortable state in my life. I had to refall in love. Eh, that's hard. I had to have a baby really hard making a human. And then I just recently had my father that was diagnosed September 24th on summer camp day and a half before I had to cancel a huge party for it was diagnosed with terminal cancer and he just passed away on December 30th and he lived with me like his room is underneath of me and um I'm so grateful it's like here's the thing I want to tell you through this from prez to ambassador I needed to become stronger I needed to become more resilient. I needed to do more self-development. I had a lot of growing to do. I had a lot of understanding life because life will never stop happening. All right. So just kind of take my dad out of the equation for a second. Life will never stop happening. And so since I want more, more is going to be expected from me. And I have to become stronger mentally and with people like, and time and being a mother and juggling all the things I was, I've entered new chapters where I've had, like, I'm not just that single girl with all the time in the world in the beginning of her business. That's completely naive. Like there was responsibility, there's leadership guilt. There's all these things that I needed to learn to juggle. And I thank God for never rushing me. Like, and, and I've never been rushed to the next place because I, I, again, just like I said in the beginning, like I work with no end in mind. I don't care how long it's going to take me to get to ambassador to to burn but I'm going to do it. Like, watch, I'm going to do it. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm telling you all right now, I'm going to Dasser 2.0. Mark my words. I will still be here. Come back and I don't know, check back in a couple of years or next year. I don't know. Like, I don't know when. Check back. I promise you it'll happen. 
there might be a lot of life in between there, but they, that's doesn't isn't that doesn't change that it's going to happen one day. I'm so grateful that it took a while because there was a lot of things in my life that I needed to figure out. And I wouldn't have been able to go ambassador as the girl that joined or the naive girl that even was presidential diamond, just living a life. Like she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. My God had to put me through some things because he was going to take me to new heights. He always takes you links when he's going to bring you to new heights. Um, and so finally when I went ambassador and you know, you got to think about this too, what you want, he'll give it to you, but he's going to give you more. And, um, you know, I almost feel almost as if like going ambassador to my, no, I'm going to enroll this month. I'm just going to enroll this month. Um, but even so it's scary, but like, I am equipped for the journey all the way back to ambassador. And I see it more myself right now because of everything that I've gone through and never given up, never always reentered. Like, that's the thing. If anything's happening in your life, or if your team has, and guys, I've lost team two companies and like, oh, the teacher it's okay <laughs> and you just have to realize that it's happening for you and not against you and like that applies every day in this business like I almost like I'm telling you in a couple years from now keyword confident Karen that's pissed and messenger will not affect you the way that it does your first year like you become so resilient to all of the processes in this business that it's just pure joy it's just pure joy. And then you just keep going. And then when you keep going, you keep breaking up. You only stop breaking up when you stop going. Oh my gosh. So good. And strong is like exactly how I would describe you. I messaged you the other day and I'm like, do you want me to find someone else to speak? Cause I'm like, I was a hot mess when my grandpa passed away like a year and a half ago. Like I was down and out and you're like, no girl, I'm good. And I was like, you're good. I'm a hot mess. I'm wearing a beanie. I'm a hot mess, but I'm a hot mess before the Zoom and then after the Zoom. But for you guys, you deserve this. So strong. So strong. Everyone love on her in the chat because my goodness. But okay. Next question. I feel like something that a lot of leaders, including myself, struggle with as we move up the ranks is really incorporating that layered leadership and having that trust with your leaders. Do you have any tips for how you've really developed that layered leadership? Um, I like to just ask people, like, I like to ask people kind of like in the beginning, like, I like to ask people, like, do you want responsibility? Like, what kind of responsibility do you want in this business? Like, do you see yourself hosting Zooms? I mean, you get different answers. Like, you're never just going to get a yes or a no, you know, voice message or get on FaceTime like I do. Like, I'm always talking to people, but like, what kind of responsibility do you want? It helps you place, you know, especially if you're doing the first 72 hours, like, it helps you get to know this person or, and you'll see if they want, you know, if they need more work or whatever, but you know, we have, again, a 72 hour rule. We kind of just, we've always implemented this system of, you know, signing when you, we sign in Shavir and we place, like, that's just the way it works. Like we place. <laughs> um, and then once you decide where you're placing their introduction has to happen, like before the move happens, like it has to happen. And it's just one of those things that I just think are definite. Now, are there other, yes, all right. I am also a professional stacker. <laughs> so I look at it as if I'm stacking, there, if there's nobody introduced, then there should be stacked. If I have nobody, if there is a box where there's, where there's no introduction to be made, then it needs to be stacked. But I'm also always utilizing for whatever reason, even if they're not utilizing this business or, or they're driven in the business right now, I say, hey girl, I'm gonna be placing a distributor underneath of you. And then the best, the, the worst possible answer that I wish I will get is why. And then I, at least I'm restarting the conversation with working in business. But um, um, I mean, layered leadership isn't, uh, it's, it's inevitable and important if you don't want it to be dragging. All right. And you just have, you almost have to trust people more than like anything. Like you have to trust them. All right. That they joined and that they're willing. All right. So you have like, people need to be believed in before they believe in themselves. And I mean, there's so many different ways to place and introdu introduce the placement of a distributor underneath of them, but it's either going to want them I mean, you're either instilling like vision into them because you believe in them or they have the opportunity to finally be a leader or maybe they're going to be like, okay, 
if she can sign people and place them underneath of me, then clearly I can sign people, like whatever it is. But you just have to give people a responsibility. I actually send out a um, business agreement that I am willing to send to you and you can post wherever you would like. I have a business agreement. Do you want me to read it out loud or no? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um. The hardest part of this business is remembering your text replacement codes. I like always yeah. forget them. <laughs> Hold on. Um, just let me, it's going to take me a second. If you want to ask something else and then I'll read it when I'm um, No, you're good. I guess, no, you're fine. One question that is, might be an easy question, might not. Um, is there anything that you wish you would have known when you first started? Um, anything, I, well, like, if anything, if I could tell myself, I don't know about known, I wish that I would, I mean, here's the thing guys, like I made it, I had to make a team page because I wasn't on one and I didn't even know that was, I like, I listened to somebody on, I have it now, but I listened to somebody on YouTube that talked about a team page and I was like, well, I didn't get out to a freaking team page. I'm going to make one. <laughs> and I'm telling you, like, I wish that I had a team page when I first joined. So if you're on a team page, which I'm assuming you all are, utilize that thing like gold because I look at our team page like and there is so much when I when I'm able to tell people there's five years of content on this team page like I hope they feel as if they've struck gold because you whatever team page that you're on guys there are so many gems in there use that search bar <laughs> use that search bar I am super super like I have to be organized or else I'm a whole mess so we use topic we use the topics a lot so like you know each topic has hundreds of pins in it um, but I would just use that search bar on your team page because you can truly find anything on them. And I wish that it, I had one. If I could tell myself anyone anything, I would say find it works should be and ask her if she can add you to your team page. Um, but this is the the business agreement, and I'll send this to you. I'll send you the actual like blank one. I just sent this to a girl the other day. So I truly see so much potential with you in this business. The fact that you they drove right in and you've been so plugged in. I know you've definitely seen the vision. I want to start helping you grow your team. I am a distributor that I want to transfer you and start helping build your team on these conditions. What I want to know is are you ready to step up and be a leader to distributors transfer under you as soon as you get the hang of things? I wouldn't ask this ask this if I didn't think that you were capable. Know that. This is a big task that will require a long-term commitment with the business, but leaders but leaders make the big bucks. I will expect you to match me every time someone is placed under you within two weeks. Um, I'm gonna, so you'll get blanks because I, then I add things in. Um, and uh, so and so will, so this is where I'm putting in layered leadership. So for instance, in two weeks, if Jordan, you and I build together, there is no doubt that you'll be able to reach diamond in the next 60 days. And we will have the biggest bonuses announced at the end of this month. Jordan and I will guide, guide you the entire way on how to lead and teach you on how I, Jordan and I will guide you the entire way and how I lead and teach you how to truly be a leader so you'll never grow as a leader alone. You'll eventually be in charge of guiding and posting daily, having daily contact by text, calls, Zooms, tagging them in posts, training them on what's working for you, connecting with them and helping them grow as well. I expect you to lead by example, by actively posting, being on Zoom, sending samples, blitzing and working social media. Can you do that? This sounds like a business agreement, but that's because it is. I take this business very seriously. When I have to decide who to place under, I have to make sure everybody knows the value of it. I've continued to watch your consistency and I'm truly impressed. Again, I want to ask if I didn't know you were capable, know that. So with that said, I have to know that you are all in, but I need 100% yes. Don't feel like you have to. If you don't want to, I take the placement very seriously. And again, like I've said three times now, I wouldn't offer it if I didn't think you were capable. I am speaking to belief and to people first and foremost if I'm placing underneath of them, um, where, where you'll get the blanks, you'll now realize why. I just didn't know if I should say it out loud, but like, it's okay, Jordan, her name's Jordan. That's what I just placed under. <laughs> um, and and it's like, is it an agreement? Yes, but like, this is my time too. And I, I do send it to people out of the sincerity and seriousness of, I want to work with you. Are you ready to be a leader? Because that's what layered leadership, true layered leadership looks like is, is an agreement of business partners. I love that. The chat just blew up. So everyone's like, oh my God, because that's <laughs> so 
good because it's so true it's like hey girlfriend i'm putting a dt under you like let's let's step it up and that's a nice way of saying it because as a basically only red i, I would not be that nice so <laughs> i'm just being honest my team's like i'm christmas i'm 58 red i hey i'm but, this, but i'm really sarcastic too so that you know makes me jolly there you go i'm red blue so i'm just like i'm not i'm not nice it's fine um so okay the next question is how do you balance busy, busy life and staying consistent? Did you, hold on, you just got muted somehow. I don't know what happened. I just unmuted you again. Um, something that I tell my, I just told my new distributor as well. Um, I work for tomorrow. So like, you know, once I was turned into you know, have life happen to me or become a mom and just like realize that like I'm not in charge anymore. Um, but I know at least like anything that I have to do tomorrow. And like, I'm kind of like a scheduled person. So like I spend time with my son every single day, specific at specific times, if not more, but I am just like, I have to be at structure or else again, I'm a mess. So every day I sit down to what I wrote the night before, um, being busy and, and, and having bad time management are two completely different things. Like if you're like TV isn't a need, it's a want. It's really thinking about what's a priority in your life and what's not. Like I just had to fit in stretching because that's my new year's resolution. So I just had to fit that in every morning where I have to actually decide to do it. So I have to fit it in or I could not do it but that's not because I'm busy. That's because I'm bad at time management. So something that I've realized, and it's maybe, maybe from me, like being a night owl, the majority of my adult life. Um, and I'm not anymore because six o'clock comes really early is that my brain I almost feel like is the best at night though in the evening. <laughs> so tonight, Lachelle tells tomorrow, Lachelle what to do. And that way I can keep consistency based on like, okay, well, I know what I did today. So what should I do tomorrow? And so I sit down here when I have like, I have coffee and I sit down and I look at where I kind of left off and where my brain left off to like what I should be doing tomorrow. And I have found so much, and that has been like that for so long. Like here, <laughs> I just ended this one. I haven't started a new one. I have it. I just haven't started it. But this is like last year where where I like make pages so and like whenever I write down something at the top like when I write Thursday that means that I wrote this on Wednesday night and this entire I mean this entire thing like Tuesday, like Tuesday and I wrote that Monday night and that's just how I work best like Friday like I knew what I needed to do on Friday and I wrote that Thursday night because I just needed, I realized, you know, becoming a mom that I needed to almost manage myself or I wasn't going to get anything done because it's really easy just to hang out with your kid all day. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Cause I, someone once said to me when I was like, oh, I just feel like I don't have time for that. And they're like, instead of saying you don't have time, say that it's not a priority to you. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, well, I don't want to say that. I'd rather just say like, oh, I don't have time. Because we can easily say, oh, I don't have time, but I'm watching three hours of Netflix every night. Or like, oh, I'm spending, I don't know what games are fun. On Take yourself back to like high school years. Like, I don't know, like bring it back to like, we all had notebooks. Like, weren't we writing what we have that like, what was due tomorrow or whatever? And like, yeah. do you know parents say like, you can't watch TV until you get it done? So like, we are already trained like for a long time to have structure like this. Like, let's come on guys, like keep doing it basically. Like I just look at it as like that. Oh my gosh. I never thought of it that way. I'm like my entire high school, like I had a planner when everything was due, what to do, when, at what times. And y'all hold on, hold on a minute. We all went to school eight hours a day and all did extra curriculars and had time for homework and hung out with friends. Listen, we all have, well, not all of us anymore, but like if you have a full-time job, you have time to do all the things. It's fine. I, I've never thought of it that way. I'm like, you know, else think back to school and you're like, how the heck? Like, when did I do anything? Okay. Anyways, um, do you feel, I'm sure you just follow like the KPI list of your day-to-day -day stuff, but do you feel like there's anything that you do every day or do you have like a totally different list or anything like in particular that they're like, this is my thing? I am the worst. Um, 
I didn't even know what a KPI was until like two weeks ago. I like completely denied it and shame on me. Okay. Shame on me. Amanda Sobek is a killer on my team. Um, sh- like amazing. She was with it works before she came back. She went triple diamond. She never hit triple diamond before. And she's just like killing it. And KPI like changed her life. Um, so do it. And now that I see it, um, it's, it's one of my business New Year's resolutions, but I was just also distracted with like, whatever every day though, my kind of like, I have to touch things. The way I look at it is like, I have to touch certain chats I'm in. Um, I have like a 2.0 chat. I have a 2000 I just followed over or people get added to or removed from every single month. It's a visionaries chat. Um, right now I have it pushed to Emerald chat. And then I have like emerging leaders that are like new diamonds. We do diamond chats. So if they're just brand new, like I really want to make sure that I touch those chats. That's like one of the first things I do because it's like, it can be as easy as like something inspirational or something I found on another page. Or, you know, if I just like got off of if I'm like listening to something or reading something, like I can give them something. And it's also really great to like, um, I mean, it can be so easy, but I just think it's something that I've done. I mean, I've never not done it. It's always there except when it like really bad days, I'm not there. But even on like the day that I, my dad passed, I was in there the next day. It wasn't, but the next day it was like, it's so easy because if one thing comes in one chat then I can just spread it out. Like I can just spread it out, whatever. Um, I need to make sure that they see me on my page every day on my actual team page. That's something that's really important. And then every single day, usually I have three rules. Like it's about me, all right? About a part of me that has nothing to do with the business. So it's like dog, kid, boyfriend, fish, I don't know, house, whatever, something. But it's me by myself, something about me by myself, and then business. And the business can be product or opportunity. I usually have a rule of five host posts a day. Now, it might seem really small, okay? (laughs) It's not small, (laughs) it's not small. When the compound effect of an entire month, that's 150 post posts in one month, all right? I am happy with my month if I've done at least 150. That makes me happy. Now, today I've done, I don't know, it was like, it was between 30 and 40. I think it was like, I don't know. But that's how many I did today. But it was the first time that I've done host post this year, truly, because I've had a a weird start. But then I know I'm setting myself up because I also have to make up. So I need to do more. But my usually my baseline is five. And and I usually never only do five. But I know on the really bad days, the ones that are bad enough for me to almost do nothing, that I can do at least five. So I've set my baseline so low that the compound is high, but it's obtainable every day with like, there's not an excuse. Like I can do one every two and a half hours. I can get one up every two and a half hours. That's not hard. And I'm setting myself up for tomorrow. Um, And then like, I mean, that's really it. Like besides that, that's really how I'm working. I mean, I actually just included TikTok too. That was something that I'm going to get back on. I promised myself that I had to do at least three a week. And I was really consistent with that for like five weeks, but whatever. I'm going to get back into it. That's something I think is important because I have an answer. I was late on TikTok too, don't be me. And I promised myself that I will do something with TikTok. That's just awesome. But really it's just like host, it's just exposure, messaging, um, and being seen every single day. I love that. That's like my absolute, I love that yeah. you said your goal for most posts, like your baseline is five, because a lot of times people will say like, okay, so I want to get 10, but then they just stop. Like they hit it and they're like, okay, cool. Work's done for the day. That doesn't like, if you have more time, get more up, but have a baseline of what you can do. Have it like your minimum <laughs> instead of your max, you know, like th- th- there's a difference. So, Okay. Um, let's see. So on your months that you have mass enrolled, do you have any tips for what you were doing or was it just like all out massive action? Um, so like I'm telling you guys, like probably this, my average this year for distributors was maybe like, like 10 a month. That was probably my average. And, um, when I have mass enrolled distributors, it's just been when I have truly like committed to just mentoring. Like 
uh, when I, and like, for, cause I have to, again, like I'm always the one, I'm going to be the leader to just first speak in the mindset. Like you have to be committed to mass enrolling. It's a commitment. Like you will never obtain it if you haven't decided about it first. <laughs> all right. Like, don't think that you're going to lock into it. All right. It's, it's a decision to mass enroll. And once you have that, you know, you just go, it's like, you just are on a mission to and mass enroll as many people as you can. And with your determination and your like goal to your, the process changes your words and it changes the way that you're communicating with people. Like it really just first starts with deciding. And then you just have to know that it's like the more people, it takes more people. So you're gonna get more uncomfortable. You're gonna have to start juggling conversations. Like, and, and it's gonna be fine. Like you're gonna do fine. But I'm telling you, when I went, like when you asked me about double to triple, I remember that month because I remember my house looked like at the end of that month and it was disgusting. It was just, we, I was wearing shoes in my house because I had not cleaned the floors and they were that gross. Like it was like just gross, but I was so committed and in my house after that. And then I got, and I got housekeeping. <laughs> to my life, my finances and everything else. Like it was like one of those things where I did not stop no matter what I juggled it all. And like, I was willing to not have a lot of sleep because I was willing to help these people. And I was just giving, 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 giving. And I mean, it just blew up. Like it just, the compound effect blew up because I was just, again, teaching them how to get distributors and customers very, very, very easily. Okay. But you just have to accept more. All right. And it's like also creating systems of more. So like word board, like when I was just trying to find a new business agreement, it's because I have 288 word boards and then like I have so many different folders to go to to find them like I have to scroll but I have created systems I'm working on distributors I know I can move the folders in my word board to the very very top of all my folders and then that way when I click on word board it's the first two folders that I'll be using and so I've created systems to help me be able to help more um, because I am planning to mass enroll on TikTok just watch I'm gonna do it and um, it's just you know preparing yourself for it then deciding to do it like, honestly, guys, like it, any one of you can be a mass enroller, but those two things have to come with a yeah. part of your success too. <laughs> I love that. Rachel Jones was on our Zoom a couple months ago and she was like, I couldn't mass enroll until I felt like I could successfully help the people I was mass enrolling. Mm -hmm. And also I always tell people, I'm like, listen, nobody's a mass enroller until one day they just are. Like no one joins and signs 72 distributors in their first month. Like that's just not what happens. So you don't have to be anyone special or like have this magical power or magical script to mass enroll. You just have to decide that you're going to do it. And then it happens. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, shoot, now what? Now what do I do? Um, okay, so do you have any tips for staying motivated or like continuing to do things on tough days, whether it's like tough business-wise, personal life-wise, whatever? Yeah. So like we, again, like it's always going to start with this guys. Mindset is everything like coming from someone that like never read a book in the beginning. And I thought when people were like, Oh, I did self development. I'm like, that's cute. Like it's a waste of time. I have work to do. <laughs> like that's how I felt about it. Um, but you have to recognize that like, you're going to go through different emotions, different feelings. Like, I mean, and everything corresponds like the days where, I mean, my relationship very grateful for it. Still, we have days. <laughs> like we have days where we're like, Rah! I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and tell my life is perfect. And those days, my business is affected too because we're fighting, and and I'm not happy about us fighting. Like I love, like my best days are when we are just our normal, lovey selves. And like, and, but no, we got pissed off about some stupid thing, whatever. And when I find myself in those situations, like I have to fix it at the root. Okay, so and that comes with you know, loss, like breakups or little tiny fights or, you know, something, a, a leader leaving or just oh, one of those days where like all of every customer you followed up with is pissed off about something like whatever, where you have to accept an escape, you know, and my, my what I like to recommend to anybody that I've, I've talked about this multiple times that people, we got to have something through our triggers, basically, go do something that you love, like a hobby. I love to paint. Um, I recently just brought my dad's guitar up. I'm gonna. I, I used to play the guitar when I was younger, and it's something that I'm doing on my off time, just kind of step away sometimes. And I want to relearn, or put on an audible, or put your ear, your 
it, it, I'm telling you, until you do it a couple times, you won't understand how amazing it feels to put your phone on airplane mode when your child is sleeping and read a book. <laughs> like it is the best space. And I never realized how amazing it was until I did it five times. And I'm just like, I just, and like all of a sudden you're pissed off in the car and you're like, I just want to go in my office and read a book. Like that's what you'll start looking forward to. And you have to um, find something that just honestly puts you in a better space, like bandage it almost. And it's like a healing bandage because once you're in a better space, you can deal with what you're dealing with better. Like, and that's just taking care of yourself. It's no different in the real world. I mean, guys, like I look at this business as a relationship. Like, that's what I look at it. It's like, I have a relationship with this business. And when it gets me in areas, like if I'm frustrated in my relationship, my actual one, I'm going to do whatever it takes to fix it. I'm going to do or whatever. Maybe I have to like pray. Maybe I go to church. Maybe I like, we need to have a conversation or I need to learn more about why he feels the way that he feels or, or when it's good, it's like, how do you nurture it? How do you keep it good? Like all the things like whatever that, like, if you're having an issue with the business or you're defeated or whatever, like it comes back to you just taking care of your mind. Because like, if you feel as if you can't get your ball in back up, well, you're not speaking glory of yourself. So maybe you need to read like a get over yourself book, or maybe you need to read like, I don't know, like, girl, wash your face. Maybe you need to read a book that shows people that like, when you're down, get back up and look what happens. You know, like, I mean, an arrow does have to be pulled back, be shot forward, right? So if you feel like you're pulled back right now, just hold it and work on it. And then you will shoot forward, but you just develop yourself in some way. I just think it's so important to develop yourself in some way. Um, I love YouTube and I love music. I love motivational anything. I don't care. I've watched every single Will Smith, whatever, like, and just like find something that fuels your mind. I love that. I was on a zoom with Ashley Mayfield once. And she said, have an escape route for the next time you're in a bad mood, because mm -hmm. we, all, we all know we're going to get in a bad mood. But if we think about it, when we're in a good mood, Hey, what are things I can do when that happens to pull me out faster? That's key. So side note, I forgot to ask you this. And then we have one other question, but do you have any favorite books or anything that you have really loved that have helped you in the business? Um, yeah, so I'm currently reading Unapologetically Ambitious. Um, I think that it is like perfect right now for where I'm at in my business and my chapter that I'm in. I really love it. Um, and it's just really been really good to start the year. But honestly, if you're a brand new distributor, or uh, is there like all ranks here? Yeah. 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 Okay. If you're a brand new distributor, the first book that I would highly recommend reading is go for now. If you're a leader and you've ever read it, you need to put that on your list. Um, second book on F-U-C-K yourself. <laughs> it's a really short book. I read it on the airplane back from conference. Okay. I like literally read the whole thing on the airplane. Um, it's whatever the title is, however you want to feel about that. But the, the whole process of the book and where he puts your mind, it really does on F yourself <laughs> and it really puts your mind back in the right place. And um, I've read it multiple times now, especially when I feel like I'm in a funk or I'm going through some mud where like, I know I'm disappointed in myself. Like no, no, like self-development's gonna fix me where like, I gotta fix me. Um, that's a really good book too. Um, my next book that I plan to read is High, um, it's called something habits, High Intentional Habits or Intentional Habits. High, like High performance habits? High performance habits, yeah. I just, I bought it and I finally have opened it to read the introduction and that's gonna be my next book after this one. And then, um, I mean, in my life, I guess, another book that's just always really stuck with me and I've read it twice now is It Shouldn't Have to Be This Way and and um, Cammy just looks tight in that. But it's really good, but it's like one of those ones that like, it's relatable to my life. I love that. Thank you. Um, I've, I've listened to on F yourself twice now and I'm, I actually, yeah. about, so it's funny because I was actually thinking about reading that again today because I just like it. It's just like, I, I don't know. I just like what it does to me, but you're the fourth person today to tell me about unapologetically ambitious. And I'm like, okay, God got it. I guess I have to read. Yeah. So funny. Okay. That's what God did to me with it too. So all right. Okay, got it. <laughs> it's like, why is everyone telling me to read this? My goodness. Um, okay. So last question. Things are getting crazy this time of year. Like we all know what can happen from these like now through summer. So 
Do you have any advice for someone? Maybe this is their first boom season, or maybe this is their first boom season where they're actually putting effort in, or they're just like in a whole different mind space, ready to go. What's your advice for them? All in. Oh, like, I don't even like, you have anything about this guys. Like I am very calm right now in this moment because I've had a very happy day. I've cut myself in a very happy place all day, but I've been a mess lately. Okay. But I've gone through, you know, this will, this was my fifth new year or six, maybe this is my sixth. Yeah. This is my sixth new year. And I know what happens from January to May. And I mean, even so, it, I mean, it went into the summer last year. So like 2021, like you gotta be better than 2020, 2020. So like, I just know what happens and this is a part of my life. But I have also done the New Year's, these booms seasons pregnant. I've also done them through loss or, or not through loss. I'm sorry. Well, I am doing it through loss this one. So tell, I'll, I'll tell you how it is next year. Um, I've gone through like hard with my mom, like fighting for her life. I've gone through a breakup with it, but I've also gone all in. And like the first year I went all in last year, I went all in, but the years in between, I know what happens when you don't go all in. And that's the three years that it took me to go ambassador guys, watch the map kind of buckle in now. It doesn't, I mean, life is going to happen no matter what your feelings, the way that you're feeling, you can't help, right? But you can fix them. And since life doesn't stop happening, I'm telling you that I'm, I'm very calm and, and just stable right now, but it's been a really hard freaking week. It's been a really hard week, but I still started this year with my team because I know that time does heal everything. And I mean, I have him, my father sitting right in front of me, truly. And I know that he watched how like he lived with me. So he knows how much I love this business and gosh, he would tell me to get up and he would tell me to go work because I'm not going to miss this. I'm not going to miss this. Now you might not have just experienced loss, but I'm telling you from somebody that has gone through it all. And I think I've given you enough experience, life experiences to show you that like, it really just comes down to decision. Like guys, this next, the next six months can change your entire life. And I mean that. Because in 2017, you know, I went diamond without a bonus in November, but 2017, literally I was nobody to top 30 in the company. Like I paid off all of my debt and everything. And it was because I took the wave of January on and I went so hard so hard. And now I know that no matter what, like since my life continues, um, that January starts the next wave. And like, I'm showing up through hard and I'm telling you guys, it's because I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to master diamond 2.0. I know I already told you guys this. I have to start. I have to start no matter what, if you're brand new, I'm telling you by January of next year, you can be making $10,000 a month. If there's nothing else in your life that can make you $10,000 a month by starting today, why would you not just go and run and just do everything you possibly can? Oh my gosh. I love that. Put a money sign in the chat. If you're like, yes, please give me $10,000 a month by next January. But I love that you said you can go all in and please do, but also, you know, what happens if you don't, because I don't want people to get cluttered by this idea that, oh, it's boom season. Things are just going to happen for me without having to do anything. No. You have to go all in and we be willing to do all of the things. I did a numbers Zoom or did a leadership Zoom with some people last week. I legitimately 10 times my income last boom season. Legitimately 10 times day. Massive moves can happen right now if you decide to make those moves. The thing is promoting is just going to be easier these next couple months. It's just going to come a little bit quicker. So run with it. Okay. So good. Any last minute things you want to end with? You're unmuted again. Sorry. Sorry. Every single, I just had to decline a face on my again, so I must unmute me when I decline or something. Um, okay. So honestly, the best advice I could possibly give you is just understanding sacrifice. Like, like, because like these next couple months, it will change the way that your life is completely. Okay. Like if you go all in, it's going to change your entire life. Like how it all looks completely different. It's going to look different guys. I live in a life and I, everything that I see 
would not be here if it wasn't for works. Like that's how deep I'm in. Like it's like nothing would exist if it wasn't for works. Nothing I see in my life would exist if it wasn't for works. Like I don't know how much I have to say that. Okay. There is sacrifice. And it doesn't have to start right in the beginning sometimes because I know, right, I've had conversations with people recently, like I told you, like I have re-enrolled as an upline to a lot of people this new year that enrolled with me last year and I want to try again with them, that I, they've already seen the wave and like, you know, just everything combined, they are not going to let it pass them this year because they've already seen it go and been like, I actually missed it. And now they know it's here again and they're just ready to go. Like that's enough hints. Me telling you, me telling you how them, maybe you're on there right now. And is that, if that's how you feel, can I get like a three? If that's how you feel, maybe that get a three. But I'm thinking about like, I'm going Emerald this month. Like I'm on top of this wave. That means that I can go double diamond in like the next couple months. That's what going Emerald this month looks like in my brain. And I'm so excited. Like, think about this. Like I am, if I go Emerald this month, I'll be able to go double diamond in the next 90 days. That's what I know this wave brings. You have to start believing that, seeing that. And then also just, you have to sacrifice for that. Like if you need to have a conversation with your significant other now and be like, I am going to be on my phone more than usual for the next couple months. And this is where the kicker is because you bring them onto your dream board and you bring them into your dreams. You making this commitment, you have to do it. And so I sat down, Michael, the other day and I said, this is what we're going to do. And this is what I'm going to do for our family this year. For the first, I don't know what, I mean, my, my goal is double diamond 2000. I mean, 2.0, that's my goal in the next 90 days. But that means that I am going to have to sacrifice. Like I'm sacrificing time with him right now, but he understands why. And I'm not just showing up here without communicating with him. I have had the conversations that I've needed to have. Um, or, and even like, you know, I can't wait. I feel like next year I'm actually going to be able to make a dream board with Ashton because I know that, you know, have, uh, he's, oh, he's they're, they get smart so young, man. <laughs> but I feel like I'm going to have to explain myself to him by the end of this year. But I feel as if I will have to, you know, ask him, what, I, what would you like for mommy this year? And then, so that next wave, next year, when I'm on this new wave, this new boom season of January, 2020, I got so gonna be here, guys, 2022, whatever, for that one, I'm gonna show him, okay, listen, this is why mommy has to work tonight, but remember you wanted that thing and mommy has to work tonight so I can get you that thing. And I just think that like kind of planning your route right now is so important all around because you will have to sacrifice right now. You might have to say no to some things. You might have to sacrifice some time, but the girl that joined and did all that sacrificing and still sacrifice and I'm still serving, but the life that I have now is so worth it. And the life that I'll be able to provide for Ashton compared to the life that I would back then is so worth all that sacrifice. I'll do it over and over and over and over again every year. Oh my gosh. I always tell people that I'm like, listen, you are going to sacrifice to promote. You just are. You're going to work a little bit harder, get your family involved. But I promise you when you promote, you're never going to look back and be like, man, that 22nd, I wish I would have just like went to bed a little earlier. Like, I wish I would have like just watched that Netflix episode. Oh man. I really like, you're not going to think that it's hard right now to say no to the things you're used to, to get up a little early, to go to bed a little bit later, to not watch 6,000 episodes of whatever on Netflix. But if in six months, your entire life looks different financially, I'd say it's worth it, yep. right? If you mm -hmm. can change your entire legacy, that is what it's for. So, oh my gosh, this was so good. Thank you for taking time tonight to hang out with us, to okay. give us all your knowledge. It was so good. So everyone that's on, I will put this up on YouTube 